Good evening. Oh, it's good to be all together, isn't it? Yes, okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to take a second to read the class verse again. Each of you should use whatever gift you have been given to serve others. As seniors about to graduate, we might be tempted to spend a good amount of time figuring out what gifts we've been given, especially as we enter the professional world. But in the soul-searching moments, we might also become acutely aware of what we don't have, of what we're not equipped with, or how we're not adequate. Today, I would like to address the importance of growth. Today, or next week, or next year, we may find ourselves desperately asking God, what are my gifts? As though we might die, or worse, choose the wrong career path, if we don't know our gifts, as though there are parts of us that are not gifts. Brennan Manning encourages us, though, that all is gift from God. If each of us should use whatever gifts we've been given, then we should use all of ourselves to serve others. Take, for instance, this very speech. It's ironic that I am speaking to you publicly about using personal gifts to serve others because my strengths certainly do not include public speaking. Mm. In fact, some of my most embarrassing moments at Westmont were in Dr. O. Chang's public speaking class freshman year, where I thought speeches about bar mitzvahs, or the Loch Ness Monster, or the man who turned into a human tree were good ideas, even A-plus ideas, um, but I was sorely mistaken. And so I never got to talk about the man who turned into a tree but I decided I'll mention him today because I have the stage. Um, a fisherman in Indonesia actually started growing roots from his arms and his legs, and the growth would not stop. Really, that's all I have to say about the human tree man today. <laughs> Other than this, be just like him. Grow like a tree from seed to sprout, to sapling, to great oak, and even then do not stop growing. Because humans have this peculiar proclivity to shrink back from the new, the uncomfortable, the changing, the next stage. Right now, we may feel as if we're shying away from adulthood, intimidated by the responsibility it demands of us. At the same time, it's actually very unnatural of us though not uncommon, to shrink back because creation was made for growth. Growth isn't learned. The inward propulsion to grow is instinctual. For instance, a tree does not stop growing because it doesn't really want all those roots or the tangles that come with the next stage of life. Instead, a tree will bust through concrete to keep going. In religious thought, shrinking back is called by many terms, but the classic term for this attitude is unbelief. The opposite of shrinking back then, the moving forward, growing upward and downward, is called faith. I think many of us have the temptation to hang on to this time and place, the past four years here at Westmont. We may be tempted to build a sanctuary over the years to preserve them and reserve them and worship them as our glory days and golden years, years so precious that they will never be equaled. Lewis Joseph Sherrill says, in all these moments and a thousand more like them, the soul takes on the role of Lot's wife. Looking backward to the good things about to be left behind and unable to go forward, one is immobilized into a pillar of salt which cannot escape from its own desolation. That comparison sounds very melodramatic as I say it, but our Westmont years are so good that leaving them sometimes feels that tragic. He says, in any combination of outward and inward events, one finds himself in circumstances where he feels the propulsion 
to pass over some sort of Jordan and enter upon some new level of responsibility. Something like how the night before our graduation might feel. And yet this new step forward is a step into the unknown, peopled with dangerous creatures of fact, as truly as with menacing creatures of fancy. The stage one has already reached and growth is good, though not yet fully satisfying. And so the motive of growth is met by the motive of shrinking back. We call this moment of conflicting purpose crisis. And we can very much attest to this feeling of crisis, can't we? <laughs> but our God confronts man in crisis. Class of 2011, God is confronting us at this brink. We're being called into a new era of responsibility that may seem too demanding. A new era of emotional, intellectual, social, and financial responsibilities. We may feel as if we'd rather not deal with all that. We may feel as if we'd rather stay in college forever. In these crisis moments, though, we can choose to shrink back or we can choose to grow. But when we live through a stage in such a way that adequately meets the demands it lays on us, it leaves behind a deposit of growth. It becomes an asset and a resource for each succeeding stage. So it may not feel real, and it may not feel like an asset or a resource yet, but we're actually becoming Westmont alumni. Hopefully, we're becoming alumni gracefully and gratefully. Our time here has served us well. We've adequately met the demands of this stage of life. We've completed a minimum of 124 units and 24 GEs. We've attended three chapels a week and we've learned to cherish it. We've had enough conversations about paradigm shifts and not being sealed in a vacuum to last a lifetime. But we've also heard those jokes so many times that they're not really that funny. <laughs> and <laughs> we've endured rough rooming situations, communal bathrooms, and we've pulled all-nighters not only for homework, but also for friends who are more important than the A anyway. We've endured worlds turned upside down by going on potter's clay, or by serving as RAs, or by tragedy at home, or by a wild fire or two. And we've even survived public speaking with Dr. Oche. <laughs> and so this is an incredible, complete stage. I've been so blessed by your gifts, your God-given dances and songs and voices, your prayers and poems, your diligence in disasters, the depths of your passions, your relentless fight for truth and authenticity. On so many occasions, you've moved me to tears and to action, and so I pray from the bottom of my big, clumsy heart that we can stand on this brink of post-grad life and forcefully say absolutely not when tempted to shrink back and that instead we'd be seized with the excitement of growth and of faith to the point that we bust through the concrete looming over us. So go, class of 2011, be human trees and have lives of ever-growing faith. Thank you.